I mean, what does it feel like to be worshipped and adored? It feels great. <laughs> For the really obvious reasons. I mean, people want to be famous because they want to be loved. And I guess somewhere along the line, when I was a little girl, I didn't feel loved. So um, I sort of made it my goal in life to be loved by many people. And I think most performers have that somewhere deep down inside of them, that they need to get a lot of approval and a lot of attention. That's where it starts now. I mean, what you end up doing with your fame and fortune or whatever is another story, you know? I think I didn't realize what that being famous was going to be such a responsibility and that everything I said or did was going to be scrutinized and and that I was going to be such a role model and that I had, you know what I mean? And so once that happens, then you start realizing that everything you say is really important and that, and that what you say affects people. So I think you have to either take that responsibility and use it in a positive way or get out of the line. Well, that's a damn lie. <laughs> I just said that to be, you know, that's in the very beginning. I don't really care about my belly button so much right now. It's endlessly entertaining to me how people grab onto things and turn them inside out and endlessly scrutinize them and make them mean what they want to make them mean. I think it's funny, you know? And it's funny to, to see, it's funny to hear how people analyze the work I do from my songs to my videos and say, well, in a way it's great that they derive their own meanings from it, but I sometimes laugh and say, I never thought that for a second, you know, but I like it, it's good. That's what it's all about, it's about making people think. I went to Catholic schools, I went to church every Sunday, I got hit on the head with rulers by hostile nuns. Um, <laughs> um, I did a lot of bad things and I didn't feel guilty about it because I knew I could go to confession at the end of the week and I would be forgiven. I thought the devil was in the basement of my house. Um, my Catholic upbringing is probably the foundation of everything I do right now. In the Catholic Church, traditionally, you are a sinner. I mean, basically, I mean, the idea is is that when, when Adam and Eve, you know, ate from the apple or had sex, um, from that day on, they were considered sinners. And, and all human beings are considered sinners. And so you're always striving to be good. When I met Christopher Flynn, my whole life changed. It wasn't just because dancing, studying dance with him gave me a focus, which is really important, and took me sort of out of what I consider to be a very humdrum existence. But he taught me about art and classical music and took me to museums. And he also took me out to my first gay discotheque. And I just saw a different side of life that I had never seen before. Christopher Flynn was the first person that told me I was beautiful and that told me I was special and that made me look at myself in a, in a different way. I think I was 14 years old and I was feeling horribly unattractive and unpopular and uninteresting and unfabulous. <laughs> and he said, God, you're beautiful. And I mean, I don't think anyone ever said that to me before. And I said, what? You know, and he, he just, he made me appreciate beauty, but not in a conventional way, you know, like really about um, spirit and, and soul. I think I spent a lot of years hating my father when I first moved away from home for like forcing me, for being such a disciplinarian and forcing me to go to church and wear a dress all the time. But um, I guess the older I get, the closer I feel to him and the more accepting I am of his, what I consider to be his shortcomings. It's a learning experience to deal with my fears, to deal with my past, to deal with my life and express myself through my work. And I mean, let's face it, it's not 100% autobiographical. I draw from things that have happened to me. I basically can't take a shit without reading about it. Everybody seems to know what I'm doing every day in my life anyway, so I might as well, I might as well not be ash ashamed or afraid to approach it in my artwork. I already feel vulnerable. 
press and love to make you their darling, and but they only want you to go so far, and then they sort of take pleasure in ripping you to shreds or tearing you down. But it's not really the press. It's it's like the public's need to do that too. I mean, people enjoy doing that. But that's like a I think that's a basic human, like primal interest. I think. I mean, I I'm guilty of it too. Why do I push myself so hard? Because I have demons. Because I'm because I want to live forever. Because I because when I die, I don't want people to forget that I existed. Because I'm constantly looking for the truths in life and Maybe I, I'm afraid if I stop, I'm going to miss out on something, you know? So, because I have so much energy that if I sat around for too long, I'd probably explode. Change is important because it means that you've grown. And it, mean, it means that the life that you've lived, that you're living, has affected you. I feel insecure sometimes and I don't know who I am. But it doesn't have so much to do with me changing as, as it's about having your, your own image and your face and your personality being made larger than life and in a way dehumanized. So when that happens, you almost sort of look at that and I look at me and I say, that's not me, that I'm me. I'm this human being, you know, and that's not a human being. So sometimes I feel insecure and about that and I don't know who I am, but it really doesn't have much to do with me changing my images. Because that's just me acting out fantasies and, and acting out all the different sides of my personality, which are all part of me. I chose the whole Metropolis setting because I, it's really my tribute to that movie. I mean, I love Fritz Lang's movie. And the whole idea of, of men being sort of chained to that, that work ethic but that, I considered that to be the very masculine, male-dominant world, and my world was feminine. The theme of Express Yourself is... <laughs> I can't say it. It's a very crass... Well, it's very crass, but basically is that pussy rules the world. Okay, I said it. The cat was a metaphor, you know what I mean? And it, but, but it represented femininity, and I think that there is that side in all men, as well as there's the masculine side in me. That's why eventually I went into that world, and I wore a suit, and I had a monocle, and I behaved as a man. Everything I do is ironic and controversial because I like to change everything around and say, well, what if it was this way, and what if it was that way? No matter how in control you think you are about sexuality or a relationship or a power struggle that exists in a relationship, there's always a certain amount of compromise that takes place and a certain amount of sort of being beholden to someone if you are in love with them. And it doesn't matter how in control you think you are. But it's something that you choose to do. And no one put the chain around my neck I, except me. So <clears throat> I was chained to my desire. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think controversy makes people think about things. And I don't necessarily want people to say, oh, uh, you know, she's right, but only to challenge their own beliefs. In our society, a woman who is overtly sexual is considered a venomous bitch or someone to be feared. So what I like to do is sort of take the traditional sort of overtly sexual, like bimbo image and turn it around and say, well, yes, I can dress this way or I can behave this way, but I'm in charge. And, you know, I call the shots or I know I know what I'm doing. I like to talk about safe sex in, in my shows or, or somehow mention it in, in, in any way I can because I have such a youthful following and a, and a very large gay following that it's, that since I have that, that ear, that it's very important for me to be, sort of be a spokesperson in a way. So much of my work is about sex because sex is is the reason for everything. I mean, I said it in my show, that's why I'm here. Because my parents had sex. And everything that we do, you know, is sort of geared to that or about that or, or I mean, <clears throat> 
Sex makes the world go round. I was exercising myself of the guilt of the Catholic Church, meaning in the Catholic Church, sex is considered sinful unless you're married, and masturbation is certainly considered sinful. So first I was, you know, I placed myself in a sexually dominant situation with men waiting on me and I was masturbating. I know it was all fine until I started masturbating and then when I started to do that, the, the men went away, everybody went away because they couldn't deal with my sexual explorations or whatever. God? And then the voice of God appeared and the crucifix came down out of the ceiling and then I was in a church and I was now going to have to be punished or go to confession uh, and deal with the male authority figures, whether that's my father or a priest or the Pope or whatever. So it was to create drama that I did it. The Vatican were like hearing about my show and they were all upset about it and they were putting all this propaganda in the newspapers about my show and just how blasphemous it was. And, and it was all by people who hadn't seen the show. And I was enraged, completely enraged, because how dare they judge it without seeing it. Don't talk. If you talk, I will stop speaking, all right? Se parlate, se ne va! Allora. Allora. Ready? Ready. Ready. I'm an Italian-American, and I'm proud of it. Sono unita all'americana, e ne vado fiera. Basically, the statement was about freedom of speech and freedom of expression, artistic expression, and, and how important that was in society. Because um, if you don't have freedom of speech and expression, then you're basically living a fascist, fascistic life. And uh, I mean, then really there's no reason to live if you can't say what you want to say. And my show, I really saw my show ultimately as a piece of theater that provoked thought and uh, sort of took you on an emotional journey. I see happiness, I see sadness, I see sour, sorrow, I see joy. I see, you know, religious passion and I see overt sexuality. I see, you know, all these different things and I, I was describing life. I wasn't saying you should live your life this way. I was presenting my point of view and but ultimately I saw my show as a celebration of life. Would I consider running for office? No, because I've had too much sex. You're not allowed to have sex and run for office. So I don't think it's a possibility.